He was so rich that he had a box at the Lakers stadium. So they used to get free basketball tickets, go sit in the box, eat whatever they wanted, watch the game. That's where I see things just a little differently. Contractor, no, I will not bow to any sponsor. It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. What's up guys? My name's Levi and this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding. And today we're doing nines. Nine skaters who sold out. Now we gotta start with this. We get it. People gotta feed their families. They don't wanna, they wanna be able to retire early. Don't wanna have to work the rest of their lives. So we understand making money. But unfortunately, the top nine people who sold out on skateboarding decided to sell out a little bit too much. It's weird how in skateboarding, no one is allowed to do anything unless it is told that it's okay by the general population. You watch a basketball game and Shaquille O'Neal will be selling icy hot halfway through the game while you got LeBron James spreading peanut butter on a bunch of bread selling peanut butter. But in skateboarding, if you even got Theodos Beasley trying to sell you payday loans, all of a sudden he's blowing it and he's not that dope. What do you guys think? Should we allow skateboarders to branch out and do different things in order to pay their bills? Or do we need to keep it core and keep it tighter and make fun of everyone who's trying to make a living for their family? Let us know below. You'll notice that no energy drinks made this list, not because we love them, but because it's just low hanging fruit. It's too easy to pick on. And realistically, we know all the athletes that are wearing stupid Red Bull hats and monster t-shirts really have never looked in a mirror because they look absolutely ridiculous promoting oversized sugar drinks that are just going to make you pee your pants in public anyways. Number nine, Paul Rodriguez. P-Rod seems to ride the line on what's okay and what's not in skateboarding promotion, but he somehow still lands on the legend side. We know that he's kind of sold out for some weird stuff over the years, but we got to say the worst beyond worst has got to be when we saw him in a McRib commercial. Of course, I have me a delicious McRib. Callie, please, I'm trying to tell the people about the McRib through the Uber Eats app, please. Okay, sorry about that. Anyways. The ad was actually for Uber Eats. He was eating a McRib through Uber Eats on the ad, and there was a ton of great memes that came out over it. Check them out online. It's also ironic because now he's actually a vegan. So now they're gonna come out with a P-Rod special all vegan McRib. They're gonna call it the Switch McRib. Are you down? And he has a crazy deal with Mountain Dew. He's also got a lot of shade thrown at him for promoting AT&T Wireless and Target. But we gotta say Target stuck with him through all these years. Is it paying his bills? P-Rod said in an interview that at Christmas time, Target actually let him go in there with multiple carts and fill it up with whatever he wanted. We're talking big screen TVs. We're talking O. Henry's, probably a few refrigerated frozen McRibs. We're talking adult diapers. Who knows what else he put in there, but he got it all for free. I mean, it's kind of dope because he got TVs for his friends too while he was at it. Number eight, Ryan Sheckler. Now, Ryan has done a lot of crazy stuff in his career. You guys have seen him on MTV crying because he can't get a girlfriend. You've seen him kick flipping literally off the drop three times the size of your house. And he even had Sheck Lair. Do you remember that trick? A kick flip Christ air? Listen, he rips even though he cried on TV back in the day. But the biggest way that he sold out that we could find was double pits to chesty. This guy advertised for Axe Body Spray. The ads went viral when they came out. Everyone was checking him out, sharing with each other, making fun of him. And we gotta say, they're definitely one of the worst ads with skateboarding in him to date. It's interesting to note that Ryan Sheckler has reeled in his sponsor list lately. You don't see him doing any corporate sponsorship. It's all basically stuff that he would use in his action sports lifestyle. Letitia Bufani. When it comes to selling out, Letitia is... A repeat offender. Honestly, there are so many bad corporate sponsorships that we couldn't even list them all, so we had to pick a few. She was first seen as a really young skater selling out for secret deodorant, doing an ad where she board slid a handrail in heels. 
Do you think it was real? Could she do it? She's also sponsored by Red Bull, GoPro, and Beats by Dre, which are somewhat excusable. She followed in the footsteps of her friend and our friend, P-Rod, in joining the telecommunication sponsorship. She is a cell phone sponsor in Brazil called Oi, O-I. But one of the craziest is she's a sponsor called Petrobras. Now it's a petroleum company based out of Brazil. Basically, she gets free petrol or gets free gas. What does she power with that gas? Her free Toyotas that she gets from her Toyota sponsorship. Again, this list is so long. Next up, we decided to choose a brand instead of a person because there is a whole bunch of people that have shamelessly been sponsored by, yes, Power Balance. Three of our guys wore it, and I think we won the game by 57 points. You guys might have remembered these bracelets. They were plastic, pretty crappy looking bracelets, and they claimed to give you a cheat code, like from THPS. Basically, you had better balance and better strength. Perfect for manuals and when you're doing 540 Benny Hanna's revert manual, crooked grind manual, kickflip, backside flip, all that kind of stuff, but all in combos, perfect balance now we're talking. They had a pretty stacked skateboard team for a while. It was huge, but it included people like Brandon Beeble and Kelly Hart. Kelly Hart said in an interview that the dude who owned Power Balance was so gangster, he was so rich that he had a box at the Lakers Stadium. So they used to get free basketball tickets, go sit in the box, eat whatever they wanted, watch the game. It was dope, except for they looked really stupid because they had these dumb bracelets on. They thought they had great balance and great strength. Realistically, they ate a lot of food, watched a sport that has nothing to do with skateboarding, probably got fat from the food and the alcohol, and they stumbled out of there because those bracelets did nothing. Later on, Power Balance actually got sued so many times they went bankrupt because it was debunked. It didn't help balance, didn't help strength. Now, Kelly, we've read your interviews. We've seen your stuff online. We do know that you claimed it was the worst brand that you ever rode for and you're embarrassed by it. So we'll give you that. I'm sure if I was in your shoes, I would make some even dumber mistakes. Number five, Greg Lutzka. When Greg Lutzka's career took a downswing, his corporate sponsorships took an upswing. Listen, we all kind of got sick of his frontside 270 lip slides. Greg is famous for having corporate sponsors like Jose Cuervo Tequila, Harley Davidson, obviously Kangol, or some other ratchet brand for having the worst fedoras in the entire world. He's got a water sponsor, which, bud, turn on your flipping tap, put a cup under there, am I right? He's sponsored by Saddleman. You know that motorcycle seat company? In case he lays down his free Harley Davidson with a Saddleman seat on there, he's sponsored by Russ Brown's motorcycle attorneys to cover his tail. But we haven't even got to the worst of it yet. He's got a little pot belly because he's old, so naturally he would move to the corporate sponsorship of Tender Belly Bacon because nothing beats looking in a mirror at your fat old self like eating more Tender Belly Bacon to add to it. Listen, bud, fedoras, Frontside 270 lip slides, whatever you gotta do, win Slam City Jam 10 more times. I don't care, but give it up. And most embarrassing of all, he writes for FKD Bearings. Number four, we got the yellow helmet wearing Andy McDonald. He is the king of corporate sellouts. We know this from his Sobe and his Red Vine days. He also rides for Cliff Bar. You know those granola bars? But the ultimate sellout on his whole roster is that he rode for Amazon. We know Jeff Bezos really honestly cared so much about him, he gave him a bit of his fortune. Psych, he probably got screwed like the rest of them and he had to wear an Amazon logo on his back. He could have got a barbershop sponsorship and got a real haircut and not look like an absolute fool in his yellow stupid helmet doing his dumb tricks on that burt ramp. Number three, Sean White. Obviously we know he has a carrot top sponsorship. Here's the thing, how can you be pro for snowboarding and skateboarding, have Tony Hawk as your mentor, literally have access to the entire world, win gold medals, do all the things, and take a sponsorship that has Sean White branded scooters and Walmart style skateboards. Listen, bud, 
figure yourself out. First of all, shave your head. Second of all, <laughs> learn how to skate. Number two, the ex dread wearing, currently Afro wearing, Nija Houston. Nija has sold out a bunch of times over the years. Now, granted, he's one of the best skateboarders we've ever seen on a skateboard, but he could have used a tattoo shop sponsor because luckily now he covered it up. But if you didn't notice, he previously had a portrait of his mother on his chest here. And it was done so unbelievably poorly that her chest matched up with his chest, if you know what I mean. It looked ridiculous. We're thankful you covered it, even though, Nija, I'm sure your mom's really nice. Now, listen, we don't need to bash anymore on Nija and his mom and their shared chest tattoo. We can move on. Even though he's had terrible sponsors, like crackers. He's had a cracker sponsor. The real worst thing that he has ever done when it comes to corporate sponsorships is he did US Navy ads that ran during the X Games, telling young, impressionable skateboarders that look up to this guy who rips so hard that they need to go and join the Navy, otherwise they'll never amount to anything. He says in the ad, if I wasn't a pro skateboarder, I would definitely be in the US Navy. It's hard to think what I would be doing if I wasn't a skateboarder. I've thought about it a bunch and it's almost got to the point where I feel like I would like maybe even like be in the army or something. I feel like I need something I need to be like dedicated to, but then again, like I need that adrenaline. I feel like Chris Niracco said it best, that if you're under 18, you shouldn't be sold booze, tobacco, or being sold to join the army or navy. Blowing yourself up for your country is something you can do when you're 18. Thanks, Nigel. Number one, you might have seen it coming, the king of all sellouts, it's got to be our man Tommy Honk. Tony Hawk, the guy. The thing is, he's had so many corporate sponsorships. Just to name a few, he said McDonald's, he said Kohl's, he said Bagel Bites, he said Jeep, he said Sony, he said Club Med. I mean, the dude has been famous for the entirety of skateboarding, so we get it. But man, you're really painting us in a great light. The odd thing is, is that Tony said that he wouldn't even take a Nike sponsorship at one point, but he decided Bagel Bites was definitely more fitting. I mean, with all the razzing on Tony, he did do the video games. And honestly, his entire career is probably one of the major reasons why skateboarding and the industry still exists today. So to that, we gotta say thank you, Tommy Honk. Now that's it. That's our list of nine skaters who sold out like crazy. Watch our next video, nine skaters who didn't sell out and now currently live in their mom's basement and or in their car. Seriously though, honestly, it's all jokes, it's all love. I would have sold out for probably half of those sponsors. I get it, you wanna save for the future of your kids, you want good quality bacon at home, you need some frozen bagel bites, we understand. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Levi Shred Shop connecting you to skateboarding and this was nine skaters who sold out. If you guys like what we're putting out and you want more content, the best way to support us is to like, subscribe, and comment. Comment below, let us know who you would sell out for, and if you sold out for a crazy company, what would you spend the money on? What do you think Tony spent his bagel bite money on? Let us know below. Make sure you guys are supporting your local shops, shopping local at your skate shops, stay out of the malls, hit in person or online, but keep it local. Don't go to the malls, so that's the only way that we can keep skateboarding alive. Stay tuned for comment of the week. Oh, comment of the week. I got a spicy one for you. We're talking spicy out of the mouth, spicy out of the butt. It's the one that gets you excited. It was on our ACE video that just came out. Make sure you guys check it out. It was by a guy named Jason S. Period. He said, came for the trucks stayed for the doo-doo bag. That's right, the biodegradable truck bag used to pick up the doo-doos. You know what? He's probably cheesing so loud, eating doo-doo out of his bag, having a great time. Thanks so much, Jason S, for watching. Let us know where you're watching from and if you would eat doo-doo. Peace.